As the price of Bitcoin sits at 95800 as I'm recording, right this second, I hate to kick you while you're down, but we need to talk about something else that's a bit disturbing, and that is quantum security in Bitcoin. If you're holding Bitcoin in the taproot address, you need to know this. A major debate recently erupted in the Bitcoin community between on-chain analyst Willy Wu and Ledger's Charles Guillemet about what Bitcoin holders should do to protect themselves from quantum threats. Here's the shocking part. Taproot addresses, the newest type of a Bitcoin address, are more vulnerable to quantum attacks than the older native SegWit addresses. And according to the Human Rights Foundation, approximately 6.51 million Bitcoin, nearly a third of the total Bitcoin supply, is vulnerable to what we call long-range quantum attacks. This isn't theoretical. Google's Willow chip just demonstrated quantum computing progress that's 13,000 times faster than classic supercomputers. And timeline estimates for when quantum computers could threaten the Bitcoin blockchain range from three to 20 years. Nobody knows for certain, which is exactly why you should understand this right now. By the end of this video, you'll understand what makes taproot addresses vulnerable, why native SegWit offers better protection, and exactly what steps you can take to protect your Bitcoin. I'll break down the two types of quantum attacks, explain which addresses are at risk, and give you a clear plan before quantum computers become a real threat. Bitcoin potentially faces two types of quantum threats. So-called short-range attacks happen during the brief window of time when your transaction is in what's called the mempool, which lasts somewhere between five and 30 minutes. Although I've had that time period where the transaction is sitting in the mempool last upwards of an hour. So let's just call it an hour. During this time frame where your Bitcoin transaction is waiting to be confirmed, a quantum computer would need to derive your private Bitcoin key using your exposed public key before the transaction gets confirmed. This requires incredibly powerful quantum computers working at lightning speed. So it's the less immediate concern because quantum computers are not anywhere near as powerful as they would need to be to attack during this temporary time frame where your transaction is waiting to be confirmed. What is more serious though are what are called long range attacks. These type of quantum attacks target Bitcoin whose public keys are already visible on the blockchain permanently. The attacker has unlimited time to work on breaking the cryptography. This includes addresses that have been reused after spending, like every single tandem card, Bitcoin wallet, in existence, and critically, all taproot addresses. All taproot addresses. That's 6.51 million Bitcoin at risk, worth over $700 billion. So why is taproot vulnerable? Taproot was just activated in November of 2021 as a major upgrade improving privacy and transaction efficiency. But here's the catch. Taproot addresses directly expose a 32-byte public key directly in the address itself. Your public key is visible on the blockchain from the moment you receive Bitcoin, even before you ever spend from that address. As BIP360 author Hunter Beast explains, all Taproot addresses include public key information making them vulnerable to quantum attack at any time without limit. On-chain data shows that Taproot supply has declined 3% since January of 2024, suggesting sophisticated holders are quietly moving their funds away from these addresses due to potential quantum concerns. This issue exploded recently when Willy Wu published a guide recommending people move Bitcoin to native SegWit addresses, which begin with the letters BC1Q. Taproot addresses begin with the letters BC1P. He also suggested that you don't spend from these addresses and wait about seven years for Bitcoin to upgrade to quantum resistant protocols. Charles Guillerme from Ledger responded with a critical counter argument. Even if your coins are technically safe behind a SegWit address, which doesn't reveal your public key, if a quantum computer suddenly appeared and started draining Satoshi's account of approximately 1 million Bitcoin and other exposed coins, the resulting panic would collapse Bitcoin's value for everyone, even more than 95,000. As he put it, Bitcoin's value depends on trust. If that trust erodes, so does Bitcoin's value. Makes sense. 
Both people make valid points. Native SegWit offers individual protection, but Bitcoin needs proactive protocol upgrades to maintain network-wide trust. And I completely agree. So why are native SegWit addresses more safe than Taproot addresses? Because they work a little differently. They don't expose your public key until you actually spend from the address. The address is a SHA-256 hash of your public key. And there's no known quantum algorithm that can reverse a SHA-256 hash function. So here's the protection. If you receive Bitcoin to a fresh native SegWit address and never spend from it, your public key remains hidden. And therefore, quantum computers can use it to potentially reverse engineer your private key. Quantum computer at that point has nothing to work with. You're protected from long range attacks as long as you never reuse addresses. The moment you spend, your public key is revealed and that address becomes vulnerable. Bitcoin improvement proposal number 360, which I mentioned earlier, recommends keeping no more than 50 Bitcoin in a single native SegWit address for quantum preparedness. So if you move your Bitcoin from taproot addresses to native SegWit addresses, like Willy Woo suggests, only put 50 of them in a single address. <laughs> Most of you don't have to worry about that. I do not have to worry about that. So what about the other types of addresses that are older than native SegWit? Legacy addresses, which start with the number one, and P2SH addresses, starting with the number three, work similarly to native SegWit. They're protected until you spend, and they're vulnerable after that. Never reuse the addresses. The most vulnerable addresses are what are called P2PK, which stands for Pay to Public Key, addresses from Bitcoin's early days. Satoshi's original wallet of approximately 1 million Bitcoin is sitting there using these addresses with their public keys permanently exposed. These 1 million coins are at maximum risk and raise difficult questions about what Bitcoin should do if and when quantum computers become a real threat. So we've talked about all the vulnerabilities, Taproot exposing keys, reused addresses at risk, and Satoshi's coins sitting there permanently exposed. You might be thinking this sounds pretty bad, but there is good news. The Bitcoin development community isn't just sitting there idle. There's already a concrete proposal to address this. Bitcoin Improvement Proposal number 360, which was officially signed a BIP number in late 2024. A year ago, this proposal introduces quantum resistant addresses, starting with the letters BC1R for resistant. These addresses provide the same functionality as Taproot, but remove the quantum vulnerable key spend path. Eventually, BIP360 will combine classical Shor signatures with post-quantum algorithms like Falcon and Crystal's Dilithium for double layer security. In other words, the proposal suggests changing the address type to a post-quantum ad address type and introducing some security measures that are quantum proof. So that sounds good. And it's good to know that this proposal is already under consideration. However, migrating the entire Bitcoin network to these new addresses is going to take some time. University of Kent Research estimates a minimum of 76 days to migrate all the Bitcoin over to these new addresses, but that's if 100% of the block space is used for migration, which is not going to happen. Under realistic conditions, it's expected to take about two years to migrate. This is why the Bitcoin community needs to start right now, not when quantum computers are a real threat. So what steps can you take right now? There are five of them. Step one, audit and identify. You need to check every Bitcoin wallet and address that you control. Taproot addresses start with BC1P. Native SegWit addresses start with BC1Q. Legacy addresses start with the number one or the number three. Know what you're holding and where it is. Step two, for long-term holdings, move them from Taproot to native SegWit. If you're going to hold significant Bitcoin holdings in Taproot addresses for years, you might consider moving them to native SegWit address. You can do this during low network fee periods. And of course, this movement is going to cost a little bit of money, but you're gaining some temporary quantum resistance. Step three, never reuse addresses. And I've said this a thousand times on my channel. This one is critical. 
Once you spend from any address, generate a new one. For instance, when I use a Sparrow wallet on my desktop computer to send Bitcoin from one wallet to another, the change from that transaction goes into a newly generated address. So it's like taking all the money out of your wallet, peeling off some, replacing the wallet, and putting the change back into a new wallet. That's good Bitcoin security protocol. And many wallets do this automatically. But make sure you verify that in your settings because there are a lot of wallets that don't do this at all. In other words, you take your wallet out, take all, all the money out, send Bitcoin to where it's going, and then you put all the money back in the wallet. Nice and tidy, right? Now, that public key for that wallet, that address that you took the money out of, is now exposed and vulnerable. Address reuse isn't a privacy issue anymore. It's now a quantum vulnerability, provided quantum computers become powerful enough. Step four, use cold storage properly. Move long-term holdings to fresh native SegWit addresses on your hardware wallets. Then, don't touch them. Unexposed public keys are your best protection right now. And remember, keep no more than 50 Bitcoin per unused address. For most people, that's not going to be a problem. And step five, stay informed. Follow the BIP360 development and this channel, of course. Subscribe down below. When quantum resistant addresses are available, be one of the first to migrate. Update your estate planning documents so beneficiaries know they're going to need to migrate before quantum computers become a real threat. Let's recap. Quantum computing is advancing rapidly, especially with Google's Willow chip. Though we're likely years away from quantum computers becoming a real threat to Bitcoin. Taproot addresses constantly expose your public keys, making them more vulnerable than native SegWit addresses, which keep your keys hidden until they're spent from. Approximately 6.51 million Bitcoin are already vulnerable to long-range quantum attacks. And the Bitcoin community is working on a proposal called BIP360 to introduce BC1R quantum resistant addresses. But this is going to take time to implement and even more time to migrate the Bitcoin. If this information helped you understand the quantum threat to Bitcoin, go ahead and smash the like button and hit the subscribe button while you're down there. And I'd like you to leave a comment with two things. Number one, what you're planning on doing. And number two, what do you think should happen to Satoshi's 1 million Bitcoin if quantum computers become a real threat? Should they be protected and locked up somehow? Or would that violate Bitcoin's core principles? There's no easy answer, but I'd love to hear your perspective. The good news is you have time to act. And now you have the knowledge to make great informed decisions. Thank you guys so much for watching. I really appreciate it. Stay safe. Stay sovereign. I'll see you in the next video.